What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith, co-owner of Recapture Values, alongside my talented wife, Bailey Smith. And hey, guys, we've been working, working, working for you guys. I've been kind of behind the scenes, which is why you haven't been seeing me. But trust me, I've been working for you guys. We're getting the magic. I'm the magic man. I've been doing all the <laughs> social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. You know what I mean? I've been working for you guys. But yes. A lot of big things are coming, and we are happy that you are watching these videos. We hope these videos help you guys. And We're going to be putting out new videos every Tuesday, and we're going to call it Teach It Tuesday. So cool. be prepared to learn. Yeah. So whether you're a mama, a grandma, and any, any sort of family member making stuff for your little nieces and nephews, whatever. Right. Um, shop owners, we welcome you to watch our videos and learn. We're just going to be going through our favorite patterns and showing you how we use them in our own shop and we hope you can benefit from them. Well, enough of the introduction. We hope you enjoy this video. See y'all on the other side. All right, everybody. I know you guys have been waiting for Teach It Tuesdays and they're finally here. Tonight, we are going to go over crop tops. And um, we've been looking at the comments that you guys leave on the videos. And your suggestion was, since we've done bummies and since we've done head wraps or and turbans, um, you guys wanted a shirt to kind of go for people who want to start their own business. So we are going to do a shirt tonight. Um, our shirt, uh, first of all, if you haven't joined our group, our group for this, um, for makers, people who want to make things, uh, whether you're a shop owner, whether you're just a regular person making stuff for your family, um, join the group. In this group, we'll be able to share um, your pictures of stuff you're making. If you're having trouble doing something, sometimes we can get a little one-on-one. -on -one. And we have a, a few more options coming up soon with one-on-one -on -one, um, subscription things that you'll hopefully get a little bit more help. Um, but in that group, we as a community are starting to, you know, help each other and it's just a great space. Great space to be, especially if you're a beginner because there's some people in there that are not so, not such a beginner and there's people that have been in there for a while or there's people that are just starting out. So, okay. So, oh, that group, <laughs> that group is RVs, which is RV apostrophe S show and tell. And and is like the ampersand sign, I think that's what it's called. Um, but that's our group, and we'll link it down below in the description. So you can join that. Um, you don't have to be a, a shop owner to join that group. You can be anybody. Anybody, everybody is welcome in that group. Um, and that's where you'll, you'll ask questions like, you know, oh, we're, what am I doing wrong? Stuff like that. And, we'll, you know, I'll try to help as best as I can. But there's other people in the group that are um, giving out advice and questions too. And, or answer questions, and that's great. So... All right, so we are going to do crop tops today. The crop top pattern, which I shared, and I'm going to start doing that um, in the group. I will share the day that a pattern drops, or maybe a couple days before, but today I did it on the day, um, is Baby Bloomsbury and his Little Lizard King um, pattern company. And the pattern name is Baby Bloomsbury, and, um, or Bloomsbury, my bad. My, my southern accent okay well um this pattern includes a top and a bottom and it's from sizes newborn to size girls four and um, i'm just going to use the size that fits my daughter so she can wear this afterwards you can do sleeveless you can do sleeved um but if you do if you want like this the tank version of this there is a specific bodice that the sleeve um arm sky will be different so you have to print out the, the bodice for the one that you're wanting. And for this specific one, we're going to be using the sleeved bodice because I'm going to do short sleeves. I think the crop tops are, look really cute with the short sleeve. Just a simple crop top. Um, so sleeved bodice. And then we have one here that is the sleeved bodice with the simple hem. And we cut it at the crop with simple hem cut line. We call this one a, um, a mid crop top, mainly because it sits a little bit below the belly button. It's a little bit shorter than a regular top, but it's not like a crop crop top. This is like for your more modest, but you still want a crop, but you want to still be modest. This is the one that we would choose, and it is the sleeved bodice with simple hem, and we cut it at the crop with simple hem cut line. So that would be like, just like the pattern calls you to make a crop top. We found this to be more, like I said, of a longer version of a crop top. So we call this our mid crop top. This would be a different version of this and it's called 
We call this one our true crop top because it's shorter. And this would be the Bloomsbury or Bloomsbury sleeved bodice with skirt. And then we cut this one out at the peplum with ruffle cut line. So um, you can see, I'll show you here. You can see we match up the neck and the arm scuff. And you can see how much shorter it's about. I'll tell you how much shorter it is. It's two inches shorter than the other one. So we call this one our true crop and we call this one our mid crop. And we just print them out in each size. And then here's the sleeve, you'll need the sleeve. And they also have, I believe, so you can do a tank version, like I said, but you'll need to print out the correct bodice for that. Then you can do short sleeve and then you can do, I think they have a long sleeve. They may have a mid sleeve, but you can also add ruffles to the sleeves. It's a really nice pattern and they have uh, the bloomer option. Super cute pattern. Definitely re recommend getting it. Also, don't be turned away by Little Lizard King's 24 hour download policy. Um, like it's... I think it's when you start it, you have 24 hours or something like that, but their their customer service is great. If you ever have an issue and your download expires or you can't download your pattern anymore, as long as you've purchased it from them, you can message them. Um, their email, I can't, I don't really remember their email for support, but um, they have a Facebook group. Uh, I'll link that below too, and I'll link the pattern um, where you can purchase the pattern from down below. Um, but they're super nice, super friendly people. I've done pattern tests for them and they're amazing. Love their patterns. And some people just get a little turned away by their download policy. It's not them. They're not trying to say you have 24 hours to download it or you never get to see it again. It's just the way that the software is set up to, to, that they used for their pattern website. So don't freak out. Message them if you can't download their pattern and they will send you a new link to download the patterns. I've never seen anyone say they didn't do that and I've always seen them come through for that. So don't freak out. Um, love that company. Okay, so we're going to get started and for this one, I'm going to go ahead and sew up just, uh, we're going to do this one first. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to sew up both of these versions here. So I'm going to sew up the midi crop that we that we do the mid crop and I'm gonna sew up the true crop but the one of them I'm gonna do on the sewing machine and one of them I'm gonna do on the serger because I, I, I notice a lot of people have said you know they don't have a serger which is cool you can totally do things on the sewing machine um, the only thing that I say and then I've, I've also seen a lot of other people say and suggest is that if you're sewing to sell it's a lot more professional looking and you will feel prideful in it if you get a serger. But you can absolutely sew to sew with a sewing machine. Just clean up the insides, you know, snip your seam allowances and make them look pretty. Some people do French seams. Um, I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I have a serger and that was my um, solution. So I'll do one of these now. So we're gonna cut one here. I'll go ahead and get them cut. So I'm gonna, in these bodice, um, patterns is are the front and back so you'll just you'll cut two of these um, and I go ahead and put the size and then I also go ahead from the cut chart in the pattern there's a cut chart and it'll include all the little things like when you get through printing out your pieces and you're like well I don't have this piece check the cut chart that's most likely where it's going to be and um, most a lot of patterns include a cut chart and what the cut chart will show you is the neck band if you're doing this uh, sleeveless version it would include an armband um, it includes the ruffle because this also you can add a ruffle to the bottom of it we're not going to do that in this video but you can add a ruffle to this um, you can add ruffles to the sleeves it'll include that you can add um, the bloomers. You can have ruffles to the bloomers, which we, we sell in our shop. It's very cute. Um, but so, um, yeah, so the neck band, I go ahead and write it on my pattern pieces so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Um, I've done this one so much that I don't. I, I noticed that the other day that um, all the videos that I've done, I don't ever use the instructions. I've done this so many times that you just you just learn it. You don't need the instructions. You just know how to do it. So um, I go ahead and put them on the pattern piece. So for size two, our neck band, which in the pattern I believe is referred to as binding, which is a little different construction, but you can use a neck band. Um, binding freaks a lot of people out and I'm not that great at it because uh, there are machines that make it super easy. And there are ways to make it easy with a sewing machine or a serger 
well, we have to have both technically to, to make it look correctly, but we're just going to do a neck band. So here we go. This is some scrap fabric that I got in a scrap pack once before from Knit Pop, which we will also link below. Um, we love their scrap packs. They're so great and they're so fast and we'll, we'll uh, post our AF link down below. And it's just, they're, I just love their company. I do. They are so fast. They're so friendly. If we're, they're ever out of something and we need something, it, they're so easy uh, to, to message and email about anything that we need. Um, so Knit Pop, I would absolutely 100% recommend. Their quality and customer service are spectacular. Okay, let's see here. So, just like any other video, there's a particular way you have to cut your fabric. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fold. Everything is typically in this pattern, well really everything is done on a fold in this pattern. Okay, so, I'm going to go ahead and fold this fabric out. As you can see, this part is rolling, and if you've watched any of the other videos, then you'll know that that means that's the selvage. So that means this is going to be the stretch. Again, if you don't know that and you don't know how to tell that, super easy. Stretch your fabric. It's not stretching that much that way. That means that's the grain line. Stretch it this way. Stretching a lot that way. So that means that's the stretch. So for the garment, you're going to want the stretch to go around the body. So that means you're going to have to cut on this. So let's go ahead and line this one down. And also, it's important to pay attention. I'm going to use our handy dandy pattern weights. Um, it's important to pay attention to how you're putting the pattern down. Make sure that this little line right here, which says fold, is the line that's on the fold. You can cut it the other way and it would look really crazy. So, to save you the trouble, make sure you're reading your pattern pieces and cut on the fold. Alright, so I'm going to grab the rotary cutter. Here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a straight line down here. Again, if you've watched any of these videos, you know that I like to keep my pattern or my fabric tidy. And so I, I'll go ahead and make straight cuts. So I'm going to cut around. And again, you're not doing this very hard. Just very gentle. I got this rotary cutter from Walmart. And um, Friskers has a lot of issues with their metal piece wearing down and then it not staying open um, so I grabbed this one and I haven't had any issues with it since so you cut all around the piece except for this cut line all right so we got one piece there and I have a trash can over here <laughs> I don't think you can see it but I'm not just throwing that in the floor okay so that's one piece and so I'm gonna throw that over my shoulder quite literally <laughs> I didn't mean to throw it in the floor okay we're gonna sit this over here got a little crazy all right so let's move this down just a little bit and cut the next one. The next piece here, make sure that that fabric looks okay. Um, with the scrap fabric, you're gonna get a few like dirty pieces or pieces that have a few marks on them, but they're still very usable. You just have to figure out where you're wanting to cut from. Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and keep going right here on this piece because it seems to be the prettiest. All right. But their uh, Knit Pop scrap packs are insanely awesome. You get so many good pieces in there for such a low price. And they do that every Sunday, their scrap packs. Um, I haven't bought any in a while, but I've, if you're in their group, they post people post pictures all the time of what they get in their scrap packs. They're amazing. Um, all right, so we're just cutting out the other one because you have to have a front and a back. So I'm cutting out this next one here. All right. And again, the same, no matter what version of the crop top or that you pick, what, no matter what version you pick, it's all gonna be this similar construction. Um, okay, so we have a front and a back on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and add this one over here to this one. Okay, and then we will need a neckline. And so what I like to do is go ahead 
pull my fabric out. I'll just go ahead and make a fold. And again, your neck band measurement is going to be found in the cut chart. And it's gonna be referred to in this particular pattern as binding um, because they call for binding, but you can make a binding into a neck band, no problem. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a straight line here. And this, I got at Hobby Lobby. If you've watched the um, head wrap video, this is what I used to cut head wraps and it's perfect. It, it works for any straight line thing you need to cut. It. So I cut that there. And the neck band in this cut chart for size two, which is 2T, um, is one and a half inches by 15 inches. Okay, so for the neck band, you're gonna want the stretch to go around the neck band. So the longest part of the neck band is gonna need to go with the stretch. So this, this is our fold of fabric. Here's the fold and here's the other piece of fabric. So we're gonna want the longest piece to go this way. So that means we need to cut this at one and a half. Um, so I need to line this up here. And line this one up here. So we're gonna cut right here. And then we're gonna cut right here. All right, and so it needs to be 15. So what you're gonna do, open it up, open that fold up. And lay it out on the cut mat. Straighten it out, and then you're gonna cut it at 15. So now you have a 15 inch piece. And I like to go ahead, as soon as I cut my neck bands, I like to go ahead and put them right sides together. And just like any cuff or any band that you'll ever see us do on here, um, fold it right sides together this way. Um, I guess that's hamburger. And then you're gonna fold it right this way. Then you're gonna fold it this way. Just to make sure that's how we're gonna do it. So you see, this is the neck band. So we have folded it here. And then we're gonna fold it here. And then I like to put a pin Grab a pin real fast. Where'd my pins go? I think they're right. All right. I like to grab a pin and just put it in there and hold that steady. That's the neck band. Okay. So there's that. So for that one, now all we need is sleeves. Uh, and then you're basically just gonna do the same thing with the sleeves on the fold you got your sleeve piece here they're cut on a fold too this piece right here says fold so you're gonna fold it over all right so that's perfect and you're just gonna put your fold put your pattern piece down like that this one over kind of right here just to use that straight line that we already cut and then I'm gonna go ahead and make a straight line here and then cut all the way over here just so like I said clean I like clean edges makes it easier for me that could just be my brain some may consider that wasteful I consider it saving my stress level <laughs> all right so now we have our two sleeves so that one's done. We've already cut out. This is our true crop top that we've cut out. I'm going to go ahead and cut out really fast the other version of this. If, you, uh, if you're just sewing up one version, clearly there's no reason to sew up two versions unless you want to. Um, this is That's all you need for that one, for one crop top. This is the true crop top. That's all you need. A front, a back, a neck band, and two sleeves. All you need. Uh, but for purposes of this video that I'm going to be sewing on the sewing machine and the serger, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the mid crop real quick. To recap, we have front, back, neckline, two piece, two sleeves. That's our true crop top. We have front, back, 
neck band, two sleeves. That's our true crop top. Next, we're gonna go ahead and just get this situated so it's gonna make it easier when we go over. We're gonna do the true crop top on the sewing machine, and we're gonna do the mid crop top on the serger. So you guys can see the difference firsthand as to what a serger does differently than a sewing machine. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm putting the front and the back piece of this true crop top um, right here like this. I'm putting the front and the back right sides together and I'm matching up the shoulder seams and you're matching up the side seams. I'm just gonna match them up just like that. And so I'm gonna grab the sleeves here and I'm going to fold it over about a half an inch and I'm going wrong sides together. You can kind of see, and that's the best thing about double brush poly is it kind of sticks to itself if you don't mess with it. Like that. When you mess with it, it'll kind of move a little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of do that. You can press it if you want to. I don't know if you can see that all the way. I just kind of folded it up. That'll help us hem the um, sleeves. Do the same thing to the other one. Again, it's going to be, this is the right side. And so I'm folding the wrong sides together. It's about a half an inch. I just eyeball it now, but you can totally measure it if you want to. Okay, and we have our neck band. So we're gonna go over here to the sewing machine and we'll do the serger next. So this is for sewing machine people. Um, I'm gonna show you how to do it on the sewing machine. Here at the sewing machine, and my sewing machine is a Singer Stylus, and I think it's 7258 is the version of mine. Bought on Amazon a long time ago. Love it, it's great, it has over 100, or not, I guess it's 99. Um, stitch things on the front and it has automatic tension which is really awesome it's just great I love it okay so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the neck band here and we're gonna sew this seam right here which is the part that we put together and for this pattern it says you need a half inch seam um, and so this handy dandy sewing machine which a lot of them do I don't know um, this is the only sewing machine that I've ever had so I don't really know but um, they have a little marks right here that show you the seam allowance, which means that you put your fabric up to that point and you run it through and that will be your seam allowance. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna drop the foot here and it's up on this half inch seam here. And then I've already got it set on zigzag stitch. And for this one, we're gonna make it a little bit smaller. So I have it at 3.5 width and 2.0 length. And so we're going to go ahead and drop the foot down, hold on to your fabric, make sure you don't stab your finger, and we're going to kind of go through, through like this, back stitch a little bit, and then this one, my fabric's coming up in this thing, so I'm going to go ahead and squish that back down. Okay. And we're going to go forward. Back stitch a little bit. Okay. And clearly you can see mine's a little crazy because um, this flipped out. But that's how it's going to look. That's about the seam. It's a really big seam allowance. But this is some really stretchy fabric. So let me grab my little tools here. These are just like tiny scissors. They snip really easily. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut the pieces of thread off just to make this a little bit prettier. And then I'm going to cut our seam allowance, trim it down just a little bit so it's not bulky behind there. And so you're not going to want to cut into the seam here. But cl close enough. Let me see. Close enough. All right. So then. That's the side, the, side, the side we sewed. And so then I'm gonna take this part here and for quartering purposes later, I'm gonna go ahead and snip the side pieces here just to make four even points. Take this pin out that I got. Do this neckline. Again, it's not gonna be as pretty as a, as a serger. And once you get a serger, you'll never wanna go back. 
Um, a lot of people say that they get a serger and they just stare at it in the box because it's intimidating. But once you actually pull it out and play with it for a little while, it's amazing. Serger changes the game. Um, and they're not that expensive on Amazon for sure. I don't know if you can get one right now. I don't think they would consider that essential. Um, they probably won't ship you that too fast. So I just make sure all these pieces are lined up, which this fabric is really fickle. So I lined up the snip piece we already snipped and then the back seam here. And so then I'm gonna cut these little pieces, tiny little snips. This is quartering. We're just preparing the neck band for quartering. So there's snip, snip, and then we have a snip and a snip. So that's our way, our neck band, and it's already quartered and ready to go. So next we're going to move on to the sleeves. I am doing this a little bit out of order to the pattern, but everything that I'm doing is pretty much the same as far as the uh, construction of the garment goes, except for the neck band, because they recommend binding, but you can do a neck band just fine, and that's what we're choosing to do. It's a little bit easier. Um, so for sleeves, I like to make my zigzag a little bit wider, so we're going to make it just five widths and two lengths. So I'm going to go ahead and again, remember we pulled the seam or we folded our sleeve over, just kind of pressed it. You can use a uh, iron, just make sure you don't burn your fabric. So then you're going to put this in here. And for me, I just put it right up against the, um, the folded edge just to make a pretty, you know, sleeve hem. Okay, so I'm gonna do this right here, and a, a tick, a tip to not. So you're. I'm sorry, all my daughters in there yelling. <laughs> it's her nap time. She's supposed to be napping, but she's not. Okay, tip for your sewing machine not to eat your fabric. Grab your strings here, your excess back here, from your bobbin and your needle. Hold them tight. Don't don't pull them too hard, but hold them, um, I think taut's the word. Hold them tight, and when you start, kind of pull them so that the fabric won't go into your sewing machine. I know that's super frustrating for me, especially when I started sewing with double brush poly fabric. That would make me almost quit because <laughs> I hated when my machine would eat my fabric, and then you freak out and you try to rip it out of the machine, and you end up messing up your garment. So that's a really handy dandy trick to to prevent that, um, just to pull your string. You don't have to keep holding it once you get going, but we are going to backstitch um, because it's important. All right, so I'm going to hold this again because it looks like it's going to do it again. So you pull it just a little bit. Once it gets going, it's just fine. And you can go as fast as you want or slow as you want. All right. And again, you'll backstitch and just pay close attention not to pull your fabric because you'll get a really wavy seam, which mine kind of did, and it's because the um, the thing was pulling it, which is no big deal. You can press the wavy seam out. It's no big deal. Okay, so there's that. That's one sleeve. And so to finish the sleeve off, what you're going to do is you're going to put it right sides together here. So fold it in half. And so this is the, the inside of the garment. And so our, our right sides are together. And then we're going to sew here. And this is going to be that seam. It's going to be a half inch seam. So we're going to make our zigzag shorter again, or not as wide. So three and a half width, two and a, or two length, half, half inch seam allowance. So you're going to do it again, same thing. If you need to pull these tight, backstitch. And I need to pull them tight again because sometimes it gets crazy. I just, rule of thumb, hold your strings. <laughs> All right, same thing here. We're going to go to the edge backstitch a few times because we want that really secure. Okay, so pull this out, and this is another handy dandy feature. This thing here, it took me forever to figure this out, but this, it will cut your, your string, which is amazing. Or your thread, that's not string, is it? <laughs> okay, so again, just like we did with the neck band, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this excess here, just because it makes it a lot prettier on the sewing machine. All 
Alright, and I'm going to snip these little pieces here because they're weird looking. Alright, and then I'm going to snip the middle of the sleeve here. And then you're going to turn it right side out. So then you have a sleeve. And then if this little piece bothers you here, um, the pattern actually calls for you to press the seam down or press that down, not actually sew it. But I like to do it because it's easier, it's easier to hem something on a flat rather than hemming it in a circle. So this way it makes that easier. Um, the pattern would call to you to hem it in a circle so you wouldn't have you wouldn't have this little piece here. But to per, or to help lock this little piece down, you just do a straight seam over here to a just a regular straight seam, straight stitch. And you're gonna fold the piece that you want to cover up underneath and sew on top of it. So That will just kind of lock that in place and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Let me clip these thread pieces. All right, so all that really does is just kind of tidy up that and kind of lay it down so it's not super bulky there under the armpit. Okay, so we're gonna do the exact same thing with this sleeve. I'm gonna do it quick. Got our neck band quartered. So next is the actual construction of the bodice. So we're gonna go back to a zigzag stitch and we're gonna start with the shoulder seams. So for the zigzag, we are going to make it 3.5 width to length. All right, hold these again. Oh, maybe. Half inch seam allowance. We're not gonna back stitch. You can back stitch. Um, I missed that back stitch, but it'll be okay. Alright, we're going to do this one here. Same exact thing on this shoulder seam. Y'all hear her in there? She's supposed to be napping, but she's not napping, clearly. Okay, so here we go. I'll back stitch this one. And we're going to go straight across with this zigzag here. Okay, so again, just like we did with the, the sleeves, we're just going to clean up this seam allowance here. It just looks more professional when you do that. Um, again, try don't cut the seam. Don't cut your thread because that would be not very smart. Okay, so. And the waviness that's going to be in your seams is going to be because of the, the feed dog that's pulling your fabric across. Um, it's kind of stretching it at a rate that might cause it to wave a little bit, but it's nothing that ironing won't uh, fix. Okay, so same thing here. We're doing the side seams, half inch seam allowance, same 3.5 width to length zigzag. Same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this seam allowance. This would probably be a lot easier with scissors, but I don't feel like getting up. So, 
Now what I like to do is go ahead and get the waistband prepared. So you got your shoulder seams and you need to make two points here because these are going to be our two points on the sides and we need to make the middle for the middle points for the front and the back. So I like to go ahead and grab my shoulder seams and put them together and grab these ones and put them together. This is the, it's basically folded in half. And so I'm just going to snip a tiny little snip here in the front and the back right in the middle to quarter my waist, my neck band up. Okay, so now I'm gonna fold this right side out. So this is now the outside of the crop top. It needs to be pressed clearly because it's all wrinkly, but, um, so now I'm going to quarter the neck band. So I'm gonna turn it this way a little bit. Let me grab my pins. This is when pins are gonna be necessary, for sure. So need four. All right, so I am doing this outside of the garment. So this is right side out. So I'm gonna, I like to put my neckband seams now, especially when the front and the back are the same rise. So these are both the same. There's not like some shirts, the back is higher than the front. This crop top in particular, they're the same. So I like to put my neck seam on the shoulder just because you can wear this shirt front or back. You can wear it backwards or forwards. Okay, so I'm gonna match up the side seam here, right here, the shoulder seam. So that's how it's gonna look. This is the outside of the garment. Um, so I'm just matching up the points, I'm going around. So the last little point here. Alright, so as you can see, let me grab the shoulder seams. That's our neck band and it is attached to the outside of the garment. So I'm gonna start over here on the neck band seam and the shoulder seam. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put this under here. I don't make this one a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna do this one more like a one fourth seam allowance. Um, okay, so then I am gonna grab this point here, this next point. Again, and here is where you will mess up a neck band is you will stretch this too much. All you want to stretch, enough stretch, that you get this the, the actual bodice to match the neck band because all cuffs, no matter what kind of cuff, neck band, leg band, no matter what you're putting on it, they are going to be a tiny bit smaller than the actual opening. So you have to stretch the neck band to fit the opening. But the, the trick is not to stretch the actual garment. You just stretch the neck band. So you stretch it just enough that that neck band lays right in line with the, the bodice. So like just enough that you have raw edges together. Just enough. Stretch it too much, you're going to have a, a wavy seam. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to go ahead. Again, this is a one-fourth seam allowance. And I'm just gonna go from point to point. That's my goal with the neck band on the sewing machine, is from point to point. And you can sew over pins, but just prepare yourself that your needle could potentially break. So I like to pull them out. Um, I learned that lesson when I was a beginner and my sewing machine didn't like it. And I don't think a lot of them do. So next point, we're going to the next shoulder seam because we're in the middle now. Again, just pull it just enough stretch to lay the let neck band onto the garment. And try to make it in a straight line because it'll make it easier for you to sew. Alright, pull this one out. So we're going to go around here to this next one here. Again, just make sure everything is nice and tidy. Stretch the neck band just enough. Just enough so that it's lined up there. All right, 
we're moving to our last little piece here. I'm going to take the needles out of my mouth. All right, so last line here. You're gonna go right over the part where you started. All right, so you flip it out and you have a neck band. And it's a little wavy right now, but I'm gonna show you a trick um, to fix it. But first, I'm gonna try to clean up just a little bit, especially the side seams, this little bulky area here. I like to cut the little random pieces off of the neck band where my side seams, that's the inside of the neck band. I'll just like to snip that off. So it's really bulky and not very pretty. So snip all these little pieces, main threads here. All right, and you just go in and kind of clean up that seam allowance. Um, again, this one was one fourth. I did the neck band at one fourth. So you're not really gonna have that much left over on the seam allowance on the neck band. So, to tidy up this neck band and make it look more professional. And again, see like, here's a perfect example of how you can easily mess up. And that just happened with not stretching properly. Um, you can, it's like, that's not necessarily a mess up, but that's how you would do that. So, that's how you, like, that's an issue that you can have. Um, a way you can fix that, let's see here. You can go in, find the little piece that messed it up. Let's see. Find that little piece, and you can get a seam ripper. Easy fix. Get a seam ripper. Find that one that didn't fold correctly. All right, so there it is. We undid it, and we're going to go back through, fold it out again. We're going to stretch it just a little bit more this time to make sure that that doesn't happen. All right. All right. Okay. Let me pull this little piece out of the, of the thread. That, okay. So... Now all it needs to be is pressed because now it's poking out because we've tried to pull it. But um, it just needs to be pressed now. But that's the neck band. Um, let's just make sure this pieces that we just did here are cut off. All right, so the trick to making the neck band look amazing is going to be a straight stitch. And so what we're gonna do is straight stitch and I like to make mine um, 3.5 length and I'm going to start over here on the shoulder seam and this is the neck band right sides out and I like to fold this the seam allowance part under so that's what you're going to be sewing um, so I like to get mine just right up against a little bit off of the seam that you just sewed around the neck band so about right in here is where you're going to go so start a thing here and then just go all the way around. Be really steady. Try to keep it exactly the same. This is called a top stitch. And I think it just makes it look a lot nicer. And I do this regardless of if I'm doing a sewing machine or a serger. Um, this makes it look a lot neater. But you have to have steady hands to make sure that you keep it the same distance. Put your girl all the way around and again. Back stitch a little bit. Pull it off. And this... Uh, waviness again nothing that a iron will not um, fix so as long as you're not stretching your fabric 
the waviness will just be pressed out with a iron. Okay, so then there's the neckband. It's not so bad. I don't know why it's not focusing. Let's make sure it focuses. There's the neckband. Okay, and then that's the little piece that we fixed. Again, all you have to do is um, press it and it'll be fine. Okay, so now we're gonna do the sleeves. So we're gonna turn the shirt inside out again. All right, so it's inside out. That's the inside of the shirt, inside of the shirt. Okay, so we're gonna grab our sleeves, which we have turned right side out. Okay, so this is the outside of the sleeve. And remember we snipped this little piece up here. So now we're gonna go in here. So this is the inside of the garment. My hand is in the neck hole and it's coming out of the sleeve and the this, this shirt is turned inside out. Okay, so we're gonna put the sleeve right side out into the neck hole or into the arm hole, I'm sorry. So my hand's in the neck hole coming out of the sleeve and so the top part, the piece that we snipped of the sleeve is gonna be up here and I'm gonna pull it through the sleeve. See what I did there? I'm pulling it through that way and I'm gonna match my snipped point on the sleeve. It's not focusing. Snipped point on the sleeve to the shoulder seam and then I'm gonna pin it. Okay, so let me grab a pin. I'm gonna pin this here. And I need another pin because I'm gonna then match the seam of the sleeve, which is this, to the seam of this. So remember, this is they're right sides together now, if you can see that. So the sleeve is right side out, the garment is right side in, and so both right sides are touching each other. So they're right sides together. So you're gonna match up the seams here and then you get your sleeve is inside the garment. Okay, so we're gonna do the other side real fast, exact same way. Sleeve, right side out, garment, inside out. Putting the sleeve in, the top little snip point up, matching it up to the shoulder seam. This one. All right, so we're gonna go back to a zigzag stitch. There we go. So we're gonna do the one that we've been doing, which is a 3.5 width, two inches or two length. I keep saying inches, sorry. Okay, so for this, you're gonna make sure that the raw edges are even. It's gonna require a little bit of moving the fabric around to make sure they match up. I like to start down here on the underarm part a little bit after the seam. So I like to put that part under here, under my sewing machine. This is gonna be a one, um, I like to do, let's say, th three eighth seam allowance. That's what I'm gonna do. You can do a half, you can do a fourth, whichever one you wanna do. I'm gonna do three eighths seam allowance. So I'm going to line it up to the 3 8 seam allowance. Don't stretch your fabric. Just let it go. And you're going to sew around the armhole. Pull your pin out at the top. I'm pulling this side over here. So I'm going inside the circle of the armhole. And I'm making sure all my pieces are matched up here. And again, I'm not stretching. I'm just holding it to make sure that it doesn't go in the in the needle when it doesn't need to. Pulling this pin out. Alright. And I'm gonna go right over the 
part where I started and zig back stitch and go forward a little bit. Okay. So then we are going to cut that piece, snip all our little thread pieces. All right. And again, totally preference, but I feel like this is what makes the garment look really pretty when you clean up your seam allowance. Pay close attention not to cut into the thread. It's a lot easier with scissors, but again, I don't feel like getting up, so I'm gonna use these little clippers. These little snippers. Pop your little arm out. And then there's your arm. So we have an arm, now it's right side, or it's inside out. So we're gonna do the other arms. And I'm gonna do this one a little bit quicker. Make sure that you got right sides together. to be taking a nap. <laughs> Just snipping the little excess thread pieces in threads here to make for tardiness sake because you don't want all that inside your garment. All right, and again, you just clean up your seam a little bit. There's a much easier way to do this. child is in there doing right now. The joys of motherhood. I think she may be being a puppy dog, possibly. That's my child. She's two. <laughs> And she's a goofball. She's the one who models most of the clothes that we sell. We have amazing reps for our brand though, but she, she's our original brand rep. She's kind of born into it. Okay, so now we're gonna flip it right side out. And boom shakalaka, you have a crop top. And then so you can leave this part, if you backstitch the side seams here, you can leave this part raw if you want to. If you don't want to hem it, that's totally okay. If you're selling it, just mention in your description that it's left raw because you don't want a customer getting upset. Uh, a lot of customers don't care. Uh, but if you want to hem it, it's absolutely okay to just come over here. Go to make your zigzag stitch wider the same way we made the sleeves. Five width, two length, fold it up about a half an inch. And then just do a zigzag stitch around it. I'm not going to do it for purposes of this video. But, so that's how you sew a crop top with the sewing machine. So now we're going to do with the serger. So now we're at the serger. I have a Brother um, 1034D. And I got it from Amazon. It's amazing. I just realized I have a hair on my shirt. Okay, so for the sleeves, they're going to be exactly the same way we did it with the sewing machine. And I'll, I'll link that time stamp down below. So so I've got this, the, they're a little wavy, but um, I got the sleeves hemmed on the sewing machine. So now we're going to put the sleeves together with the serger. So you're going to put them right sides together. And you're going to sew this seam here. And I'm going to show you a trick here. I've got mine set a little bit in between three and four on all of these knobs here. 
the top. Um, so I'm gonna, I like to start with the hemmed edge out, or first. Okay, and then I'm gonna show you, I, I've got my foot, foot down. I'm gonna do just a little bit, just enough to get it underneath the needle. And I lift my foot and I will pull this string tight. And you can see it in there, I pull it tight. And then I'm gonna pull it under here. Pull it around so that this blade will cut it off. And I'll show you why I do that. I do that because it goes ahead and gives you, this one was a little goofy, but it goes ahead and gives you that seams finished. So I'm gonna clip this part here. Fold it right side out. So like I said, this one was a little goofy, so I'm just gonna go ahead and snip that extra off. And if we need to secure that with a sewing machine later, there won't be any issue. All right, so there's that piece. Same thing with this next sleeve, right sides together. Hemmed edge out. Just enough to where that the needle has gone through the fabric. This one was much better. Okay. Alright, snip the top part here. Fold it out. You see, this one was much better the way I did that. Um, and then also, just like we did with the sewing machine, you can fold this little seam edge up under here and then just do a straight stitch right there to hold that down. Super easy trick that I learned. Okay, so neck band, this little sandwich part here. It's folded and we fold it this way. We're gonna sew a seam here, serge there, this here. I'll also let a lot of people say that if you start with the folded side down, it doesn't make it as bulky. Apparently it's easier to mess up this part here. All right, so again, quarter the neck band, same as anything you would do. Quarter it. You're gonna mark the four po or four points. Take your pin out. Fold it right side out. Match your points up that you just cut with your neck band seam. Make sure all your pieces line up here. So I'm gonna match my neck band seam up with this point that I just snipped. And I'm gonna do a side point here. Boop. And then this side piece here. Boop. All right, so the neck band is quartered. Same thing here again, we are gonna put right sides together. See here, I got it upside down. So this is, the right side is facing the camera. I'm gonna put the right sides together. And I'm gonna match up the shoulder seams here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the seam, shoulder seam here. Just cutting my tails, not too close to the edge, close enough. Match up the other shoulder seam here. Sarger makes it go a lot faster in my opinion, but I'm just also really comfortable with it. Side seams, match them up. Other side seam, match it up. And this is double brush poly fabric. mention what kind of fabric this is. Brushed poly fabric. Cut off all your little tails. All right, so you have it's upside down, but this is right sides out. Just like we did, if you watch the sewing machine one, you're gonna fold here, cause you need to make the two points in the front and the back so that you can quarter your neck band the best. Tiny little clip there. All right, fold, we're gonna fold, you're gonna Turn your garment right side out. Cause that's how I like to place my bands. I just find it easier to be able to see what's going on. You're gonna need four pins to quarter your neck band. All right. 
again I like to put my side seam because this neck um, the neck band is the same rise in the front and the back most shirts have a higher back than a front so this does not always work but I like to put my side seam on the shoulder seam or my neck band seam on the shoulder seam so that's what I meant to say so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up line them up right there pin it I'm going to go around and match up every point of my neck band to the points that I've made and snipped on here. I think my daughter's finally asleep. Hopefully. <laughs> Alright, and then we have the last little middle point here. And again, I'm just snipping, like I'm just lining up the neck band on the outside of the garment so that when you flip it up, the seam will be on the inside of the garment. So I'm going to start right here on this part here. So that's the inside of the garment. It's the outside of the garment. I've got the neck band on the outside of the neck hole. Again, it's really important not to stretch the garment you're just stretching the neck band because no matter what the neck band neck band leg band any kind of band you're going to put on your garment is going to be about 80 percent of the opening so it's going to be smaller that's the main thing that i get asked is why is my neck band or waistband or leg cuff smaller than the hole it's going to be you have to stretch it to fit the opening um but again, the trick is don't stretch the garment or you'll have a wavy seam. So you're just stretching the band just enough to, to line up with the part that you're wanting it to go on. So we're going to stretch this neck band. See, if you just look at it, like this is it not stretched. It's like this is the garment and this is the neck band here. See how it like doesn't, it's, this is super flimsy, which means that this is smaller than this. So I need to stretch this just enough so that it lines up with this. There. So now it's lining up. So just enough stretch so that it lines up. And I pulled this pin out. You don't want to put pins underneath this thing. All right. I'm barely going to sew off anything. Really, I'm right at the blade as far as what I cut off seam allowance. I don't even really cut off anything unless it accidentally gets close to it on the neck band. Again, don't stretch too hard. You're just stretching enough to make sure that these are together because you want everything to be in the side seam or in the seam. All right. Next point here. Last point here. I just go over where I sewed. I pull out some strings just to make it tight. Again, there's a tool where you can cut your tail longer. And you can thread your tail into your serger cord. Um, I don't typically do that. I just like to go over to my sewing machine and sew a zigzag stitch over this to secure it front and back. Um, it's just easier. So, as you can see, it's a much nicer neck band. But it's still, it's very similar to the sewing machine. Like So that just shows you that you don't have to have a sewing machine. So we're going to do the sleeves. And then we're going to go over there and top stitch the neck band. Um, so, sleeves, we turn the garment inside out sleeves are right side out we've already snipped the top part here so I'm going through the neck hole through the neck hole out the arm and I'm gonna grab the sleeve which is the the arm hole is actually facing if you can see that so this is the inside I'm gonna pull it through the sleeve I'm gonna match it up here 
pin it here. I'm going to do the same thing with both sides. So you need four pins. Then you're going to go under here and you're going to grab the, the sleeve seam here and match it up to the side seam of the shirt. Do the same thing to the other side. Sleeve is right side out and I'm putting it inside the hole here. Matching that snipped point of the top of the sleeve to our shoulder seam. And then we're going to match the bottom part of the sleeve seam to our side seam. I'm going to grab this right here. Alright, so the exact same way that I do it on the sewing machine, I'm going to do it on the serger. It's just a different seam. Um, I like to start, I don't know why I do this, I just like to start right here. Here's this, the middle seam. Or I like to start about right there. Make sure you pull your needle out of the way so you don't, um, your needle that you got your pin that you have in here. So again, you're not stretching this too much. You're just pulling it to where the edges meet up. The raw edges are together. Pull your pin out. Make your fabric pretty. Make it match so that you can go around this curve. last pin out all right same thing again I just like to pull the excess pieces out here and then go over in zigzag stitch over this to secure it we're gonna do the exact same thing with this side here this shoulder or this sleeve do the exact same thing here we go do it super quick Almost done. Pull your pin out. Pull it around. Remember, don't stretch too much because you will mess it up. Really don't stretch it all if you can. The, the shoulder because it fits in there. You just have to make it match up. This is our midi crop top and we're going to go over here and top stitch the neckline and again before we do that I like to finish the crop tops out you can leave it raw if you want to or I turn all my knobs to zero and then just go around the bottom don't stretch it just go around the bottom it, whether I'm hemming it or not I'd surge around the edge I'm not even cutting anything off. Alright. And I just pull it a little bit. Again, a zigzag stitch over that. If you want to leave it just surged like this, this is how it would look. If you just left the bottom surged like that that's i mean that's how it's gonna look um it's kind of a little bit i need to change the blades on my serger okay so we're gonna go back over here to the so all right just to do a little bit of cosmetic on the serger the sewing machine i like to go ahead and top stitch which i will do with a straight stitch at 3.5 width and 3.5 length i'm gonna start here and make sure that Serge seam is that way, so that's what you're going to be sewing over. This part here, I'm going to make sure it's underneath and going that way. So then I'm just going to serge, I mean sew a straight stitch, and like I said, 3.5 length straight stitch. And it's going to be as close as possible, like a sixteenth um, to the, the actual seam here that we got. The actual seam, I'm just making it, it's just for cosmetic purposes, so... Just make sure that you keep it the same distance away from the actual seam for the most 
beautiful result. This is tricky because you try you have to keep it steady. stitch a little bit and you're good to go and let me grab these little snips this is my sewing shirt by the way I just like this shirt and that's I've realized I think all my videos have been done in a shirt it's just my comfy shirt I need to make more of this shirt I didn't make the shirt I bought it but I'm sure I could make it all right so we snipped that piece off and there's our neckband serge neckband okay Surged and then top stitch. So then we have this surge and it's nothing to just come over here. I'm gonna go ahead and do it just because him it. This is the garment is right side out, but I'm folding it about a half inch up. You can see here it's about well, I'd say about three fourths inch up. And so I'm just gonna do a five inch or five width zigzag. By two length and I'm just gonna go around don't stretch this or it will get lazy and I'm just going all the way around the bottom here. and this is how you can hem it I just like to zigzag stitch it. Um, you could straight stitch it. It might not have as much stretch though. And again, if you need to press to hem your shirt, absolutely do that. I just did it so much. I just eyeball it. side by side the sew sew machine version versus the serger version so all right so I have pressed both garments and here they are um I don't believe that really by the naked eye you'd be able to tell which garment was made with a sewing machine and which garment was made with a serger I think um this one, remember, I left raw. This is our true crop top, and it's raw. If you want to make it even more cropped, you would obviously hem it, um, and that you just fold it under. Um, this one is our mid crop top, and it is hemmed half an inch, well, really about three fourths inch up, and I've I've done it. So this one was made with the sewing machine, and this one was made with the serger. They're both the exact same pattern. The neckband looks almost exactly the same. Uh, my husband just came by, and what I asked him, I asked him which one looks like the sewing machine was. Like, can you tell which was made was which? And he had a hard time, but he noticed the only difference that he noticed on the outside of the garment, which is what most people will see and care about, is that the seam. Um, you, it's not as tight as the serger, because this is a sewing machine. This is serger, and the. Um, neck band seams and the arm seams you can just see a little bit of pulling here that you can't see on this um serger one but other than that no one's really going to notice except for the inside of the garment which i will show you now or flip them out and you will see what the inside of a sewing machine one looks like compared to the inside of a serged one and again remember this one's left raw um, just because that that's a style some people do. I know some people don't like hemming. I honestly hate hemming It's not, it's not the best thing in the world to do. So I'm gonna flip this one out and just to show you what it looks like on the inside 
depending on what you use to sew with. And it just kind of gives you a really neat inside of the garment. But again, as long as you're cleaning up, your, and this one looks terrible. I didn't clean that one up the, the greatest. But as long as you're cleaning up your seam allowance, no one's going to care. You can absolutely use a sewing machine. Just clean up your seam allowance. I think there's a tool out there. I saw somebody saying that that will cut off the excess you could put on your sewing machine, which is pretty nifty. But um, again, there's really no difference. Um, there's really no difference. And then also that little piece on the sewing machine that we snipped is right here. After it was pressed, you can barely tell that we even messed that up. Okay. So that is how to do a crop top um, with a sewing machine and a serger. You can add these to your bummies, and they're super cute. Again, if you want to make this even more cropped, you obviously hem this one. And remember, this one was done at the crop, um, at the, sorry, the sleeved bodice with the skirt, and it's the peplum with ruffle cut line. It was this one. And so obviously you just hem it up, and it would be about this short compared to this one. It would be about that short when it's hemmed compared to this one. So we call this a true crop, and we call this a mid crop, which is, it sits a little bit uh, higher than, or than a regular t-shirt. Again, you can make it even shorter if you want to, if you're a fan of the crop -a crop crop <laughs> crop -a crop crop um, The one that you did with the ruffle, you can cut it at the crop with ruffle line, which is this bodice, and we cut on the bottom line, which is the peplum with ruffle, and you can cut at the this one and it would make it even shorter so let me show you what that would look like here it would make it even shorter raw and then you'd hem it and make it even shorter so if you want like super crop top there you go that's how you do it but this pattern from little lizard little lizard, 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 lizard king is amazing um, again, join our Facebook group. It's RV's Show and Tell, and the and is an ampersand sign. I think that's what it's called. Join the group. Show us what you're making. We love to see what you guys are doing with the tutorials that we're putting out. Shop owners, grandmas, grandpas, whatever. Show us what you're doing. We want to see and encourage you to do this because it's so great when you get affirmation that you're doing things good. Or if you, you're like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Post it in the group and we're super supportive and we want to help you learn how to do this the best way possible. And thank you so much for watching. Comment down below with any questions and any other suggestions as far as, far as what you want to see done. We have a long list growing of videos that we're going to be putting out every Tuesday now. About this time, it's going to be around 8.30 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Somewhere between there. It won't be before then most likely unless we're super on top of it. We'll see you guys next Tuesday, and I haven't really figured out what we're going to do yet, but I'll post it in the group, so make sure you join the group. Make sure you subscribe, too, because we're putting out videos every Tuesday. Oh, yeah, and I dyed my hair red, so that's cool.